Well, hello everyone out there. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to our webinar. We are going to talk about where can an MBA from Washington Foster take you? Washington Foster, of course, being the University of Washington in Seattle, the Foster School of Business. And we have uh, two great people to talk about that. Michaela Boyd, who is a career coach in the Career Management Center, and Takashi Ono, who is a 2022 grad, uh, fresh out of the program. Uh, he is a business tech leader at IBM. So let me welcome our two guests. Hi, everyone. Hey, John. Hey, John. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and thanks for coming aboard. So, Michaela, let's start with you. Let's begin with a general introduction of the school and the program. Give us a sense of it. Great. Thanks, John. Yeah, so my name is Michaela, and I am here representing the Foster School, specifically the hybrid MBA program, which is Foster's mostly online MBA. At the Foster School, we really aim to create a collaborative, inclusive community to develop leaders, insights, and progress to better humanity. Foster has a world-class faculty that teach evidence-based research to really empower our students to grow their knowledge and skill set to transform their career and act as global citizens. As you shared, Foster is located in Seattle, Washington, so we have a vibrant local business community and an expansive global network of over 55,000 alums. We're especially proud of our hybrid MBA program, which continues to be a leader in the national online MBA program rankings. The hybrid program is a two-year program that's designed for busy mid-level professionals from all around the country. So whether someone is traveling frequently, they're a working parent, our blended approach of 95% online and 5% in-person delivery really supports this busy lifestyle and brings learning to life through an experiential team-based approach. Our curriculum centers around impact on the community. And we are so invested in this approach that we recently introduced a scholarship for entering students who demonstrate social impact through leadership. But I think the, the true heart of the hybrid MBA program is really the people that are a part of it. We have a dedicated staff, exceptional faculty, and our students and alums really represent a breadth of diverse educational, cultural, professional, and life backgrounds that really elevates the richness of the learning experience and the community that students gain both during and after the program. And this, this week, in fact, your program was uh, among the top five in U.S. News and World Report's ranking of the best online uh, MBA programs in the United States. So congratulations on that. That's a real performance that was in the top five last year as well. Uh, give us a sense of the format. So how long does it take to complete the program? Are there weekly internet classes? Uh, what's the time commitment among students in the program? And, and we'll get a little more detail uh, from you, uh, Takashi, because obviously you did it. <laughs> you were on the front lines of it uh, and, and just came out the other side. But Mikhail, if you can just describe the basic format of the program for our uh, watchers out there. Of course, yeah. So it's a two-year program. So students start in fall of every year and they have summers off or the summer off rather. Um, they have class online live once a week um, and then optional review sessions. And then the majority of other online delivery is done on demand. Um, as I shared, 5% of the learning experience is in person, so we invite students to come in a handful of times a year for a four-day immersion in the Seattle area. So that in-person access and exposure is really critical to the, the learning experience as well as the community building. Um, and so in addition to the, the, there are a core set of courses that students follow. It's a lockstep curriculum and then have electives that they can choose towards the end of the program. Right. Um, yeah. And then, yeah. Good. Well, let's just uh, for a moment now turn to our newly minted graduate from the program. Uh, give us a sense of why you wanted an MBA in the first place and what made you choose Foster? 
Thanks, John. A lot of it was covered by Michaela, but from my personal perspective, at the time in 2020, I was getting ready for a career pivot. I've been working in the public sector for some time, and I knew that I wanted to find some sort of bridge to the private sector. And that's where the idea of an MBA came through. Um, the idea when I had looked at different schools was that I wasn't ready to be a full-time in a, in, a, in a classroom, in a chair, five days a week, Monday through Friday. I was looking for something that was would allow me to uh, continue working. I was looking for something where I could have uh, some time with people in person, but I wasn't looking for a full online experience. And that's why the UW hybrid program was just the perfect fit. I could keep my job, I could keep working. At the time I was living in Honolulu, Hawaii, and um, I could still have that opportunity at the beginning of every quarter to get to see my professors in person, to sit down in a real classroom and to network with my very uh, accomplished classmates. We did that uh, again at the start of every quarter and that immersion was always something that we always had a blast at academically and personally. The other thing that kind of cinched the deal for me when applying for MBA programs was just the network within the UW foster community, the rankings, it just made it a perfect fit. That's great to hear. Now, one of the things that surprised me about your story immediately is the fact that you were able to make a career pivot off an online MBA program. You know, oftentimes people say that an online MBA experience is best for people who want to uh, kind of supercharge their uh, promotional uh, opportunities within the organizations that they're already in, and that it's harder to use an online MBA to make an actual career pivot. You, in fact, successfully did that. How did you do it? Well, thank you very much, Sean. That's a very, uh, that's high praise. I, I often tell people when I do talk about career change, which is something I enjoy talking about, is that it doesn't just fall into your lap. You've actually got to do work. You've got to kind of, uh, you've got to chase it down. So I'll tell you a little bit about how that happened at the start of the program when I was in, uh, in the foster program. I was working for the state of Hawaii. Um, I was a, a member in their legislative branch. Out of college, I was a teacher. I did Teach for America coming out of college. I was placed in Hawaii. I wanted to work further on education policy. I ended up skipping a few rungs and I ran for office and I was elected member in the Hawaii State House of Representatives. But after around uh, eight, nine years, I decided it was time for something else. I got into the foster and I quickly engaged the career folks like Michaela. They had me take self-assessment career tests where I was able to see where my values and goals matched up with what I thought in the private sector could also be beneficial. I attended a number of virtual roundtables with different UW alumni who discussed their career paths. And I followed up with many, many individuals, dozens of individuals um, within the network or other people who I saw on those roundtables for informational interviews to talk about their job and how they got there. I ended up finding a fellow. He had a similar background as me. He describes his time working uh, with Amazon Web Services, AWS, and my interest was piqued. I thought, well, I help people out now solving their problems. And I think I can help out people with their technical uh, issues as well with solutions. Um, that ended up finding um, a path and talking to more people who work in tech sales in the Azure world and Google Cloud. Um, eventually, I was able to find an internship experience, which I think was very helpful in making that kind of um, unique move. Over the summer, between my first and second year, uh, IBM hired me for an internship, a virtual internship. This was still the summer of uh, 2021, so we were still a little bit in COVID, um, uh, in the COVID era. But uh, over that summer, I got paired up with other folks who worked in IBM in these positions, uh, working with clients, trying to scope their issues, trying to uh, match them to different solutions. And eventually afterwards, when I went back to school, um, I decided I wanted to continue with IBM, reached out to them, and they offered me a full-time position after the program. Um, and I, I now work with IBM doing that same work. I work with our account team, showcasing our technology solutions and MVPs or kind of POCs with special clients. Um, I'm just really thankful that I got to be able to talk to so many people and I hopefully I can uh, share this experience of this recent transformational experience with prospective uh, college students, MBA students. So you did what we call the triple jump. You changed industry, 
you change discipline and you change geography all in one big leap. Remarkable. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michaela, tell me how unusual uh, Takashi's story is, or is it? Yeah, it's a good question. I would say that the career changes that we see within the hybrid program are absolutely not a one size fits all. Yeah. Um, we see a number of folks like Takashi that are looking to completely pivot paths. We see folks that are looking to grow internally within their career. We see people that are have already started a business and they want to grow it or or many folks that or some folks rather that you know are interested in starting their own business i think an interesting fact about the hybrid mba cohort in particular is about 20 percent of our students are military and looking to shift into the private sector so the career support that we provide supports all type of transitions within the program yep I, I assume that. And um, I wonder uh, what surprised you most about the program once you entered it? I'm guessing that question's for me. Um, yes. Well, I'll tell you, it was rigorous. And I will tell you that on top of just the rigor of the academic courses, um, being on your own career pivot, uh, being a triple switcher, it's almost like adding a whole nother course to your workload. So for those folks who are, in that uh, mindset and want to get something out of it, just realize that um, if you want to seize the opportunity, it's also going to eat up a lot of your day. But it is and possible. They to, and they need to have a superpower like Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> um, a sidekick, yeah, a Batman, a Robin to our Batman. Um, I think the three things that stuck out, stood out to me about the Foster program, one, um, the professors. Uh, I really enjoyed them. Many of them tailored their instruction to current events of the day. Some professors would pull out the recent 10K filings from different companies to talk about. Um, many of them had information and uh, case studies that were relevant to current events. The, the professors went above and beyond. Um, the diversity of the cohort was also something that caught my attention. I loved it. Many of them in different various stages of their career. Geography. Of course, I was coming from, from Hawaii, but and most of the cohort was based in the Northwest, in Seattle and Portland, but California, North Carolina, New York, uh, Chicago. We had people from all sorts of parts of the country and the background. Again, uh, Michaela mentioned people from the armed services, people from the public sector, um, people who were deep in their, uh, deep in the tech world also were part of my um, cohort. And building on that, the last thing I'll say that was a big hallmark of my experience was just the wide network of people in that UW Foster community. I recall talking to various people in those informational interviews from Amazon, Microsoft, Lululemon, Nike, Meta, Tesla, the Portland Trailblazers, Boeing, Starbucks. If there was any company that I wanted to know, what was it like to work there? Or how'd you get that job? It was almost a surefire bet that there was someone in the UW Foster community who, had, uh, who, had a, who has a job there and who'd take my call. Wow. Now, Takashi, uh, how did you manage your, your balancing life, work, and study issue? Because as you immediately pointed out, the program was quite rigorous, and maybe that came as a little bit of a surprise in terms of how rigorous it was. Uh, was it difficult to balance all of your responsibilities with this new thing that you uh, signed up for? It was certainly time-consuming. You know, um, I don't know, maybe your your listeners or the people who are watching this uh, also happen to watch various Netflix shows. I remember at the time of this, at the time of, uh, I took it, um, I remember the Queen's, Queen's Gambit was big. There's like Bridgerton. And what was that Netflix show with The Crown? The Crown? Yeah, I have sure. seen zero out of zero of those shows. No. I remember <laughs> just sitting down um, at the kitchen table every night. I hear in the other room, my wife would be watching those shows, you know, after after um, after we all cleaned up and uh, had dinner, and I'd put on headphones and just be scribbling away at some managerial accounting homework. Uh, but for those two years, I must say, uh, my my preference in pop culture or what's a big hit on Netflix uh, cratered, um, and that was a sacrifice I had to take, but it was a worthwhile one. 
Right. Well, Michaela, what would you say are the key differentiators of the program? Yeah, I think, you know, from the career services lens specifically, it really is around the breadth of services that we provide our students. Our team is here to create really a customized path that helps one, help students crystallize their career goals, and then two, help them make a clear action plan to get there. And it's really done through personalized one-on-one -on -one career coaching support as well as a broad suite of services, resources, content, and experiences that we provide. This really ranges from on-demand career content to groups that support career change and job search, an alumni mentoring program, an opt-in professional development program, over 60 career workshops and events annually, a leadership speaker series and a variety of ways to connect with employers, both virtually as well as in person. In fact, we host a series of treks both in the Seattle area and then regionally in the Bay, Austin and Portland. Um, ultimately, the goal of our career development is not just to help students find their next step, but it's really meant to help them gain clarity for long term fulfilling career growth. I, mean, I think to your last question, John, too, um, you know, just looking at Takashi's class, there was a ton of movement. In, on the career front that happened with his class both during and after the program. Over 80% changed jobs at least once. 39% re received a promotion within their organization. 49% changed companies and almost a third, like Takashi, completely changed industries. So I think that's what's fun for our career team about what we do. The student goals are unique and dynamic and it's really this partnership and of one on one coaching and the breadth of career resources that we provide that helps them maximize their career search and make it truly a transformational process. Yeah. So Takashi, can you provide a little more granular detail to what Michaela just said? How did career services help your uh, ability to pivot into something completely new and different? Um, I was paired up with a career coach from the very beginning, and I'm still in touch with her, hugely indebted to her. Um, first thing that comes off uh, that I think of, her uh, her Rolodex, her network was completely open to me. If I wanted to talk to anyone in any industry at any company, she knew someone there, and she was very happy to shoot off a message over LinkedIn or email them and introduce them to, hey, here's Takashi. He's a new student. He's interested in what you do. Would you take 15, 20 minutes to chat with him? Um, she was so generous with her network. Um, another thing that kind of comes to mind is, as uh, Michaela uh, told us all those pieces of data, it was fun just being around other people who wanted to either progress their career or switch, uh, become pivoters. And mm. at these immersions or over Slack, we would catch up and talk about how interviews were going, about different applications or different um, openings that they found. It was a good place to kind of build that camaraderie and feel like we're all in this together, but also just to share some tips and, and have a laugh about this career journey and the, the struggle and sometimes uh, uh, humor of, of, uh, of this all. Um, I think the one more thing that I'll mention about the career program uh, is just that they've been so uh, they've been so focused on getting people to where they want to be. Michaela and her colleagues, they don't, they're not part, they don't teach a class per se. Their sole mission is just to help people in their career. Um, it's not like they also help out with econ courses or anything like that. Their sole job is just to take meetings from me on their calendar, listen about where I want to go, and then plan how to get there and showcase those opportunities and put uh, bring together illustrious alumni who can talk about how to interview uh, at Amazon, or how to upgrade your LinkedIn to catch recruiters' eyes, or to talk about what alumni are doing in the tech space, or whatever it is. They put together these roundtables, they're laser focused on career services, and that's something that um, I didn't expect would be as, um, as uh, pointed, but thankfully, um, it really was, and uh, their sole mission 
uh, I think was achieved with me and obviously with at least 80% of the people from, from my class. Yeah, and I should point out to all our viewers that um, many online MBA programs do not have this level of career support. So when you're looking at the landscape of programs uh, and you may be enticed by lower price programs, you, you probably will get no career support whatsoever. Uh, except a few things online um, through, you know, a web page here or there. And, and this is what differentiates to me the premium online MBA experiences from those that are just the mass uh, of them, because there are over 350 in the United States alone. Hmm. You chose wisely. <laughs> uh, and clearly your successful outcome uh, is a result of that. I wanted to ask you about the immersions because I also think, frankly, that a quality online MBA program allows for opportunities for some face-to-face -face meetings with classmates and with faculty. And I think that that is an essential element to more deeply bond people together. And I wonder how you experienced those immersions, how many you went on during the course of the program uh, and what it was like. Mm -hmm. I'll take a first stab at that, then Michaela, you might fill in some gaps. Mm -hmm. I went to every single immersion that was possible to go to. Um, as I would a, have to. <laughs> <laughs> we had them at the start of every quarter, and then we had another one at the end of our last quarter for graduation, obviously. Um, but we would all fly in um, to Seattle. Some of us would fly into Seattle, other folks would drive. Um, we'd have class, uh, they'd be long days, but we'd have classes in the morning, in the afternoons. Um, we'd have, uh, they'd cater our lunches for each other. And usually in the evenings, there'd either be an organized social hour, or sometimes there would be a full on business school event where people from the hybrid uh, program can meet other, there's a technical program in Foster. There's a full-time program in Foster. So uh, we got to go to events at night where we got to network with other people from the various other schools and uh, various other channels in our business school. Um, we got to know each other in a way that uh, you just simply can't over, over Zoom. Um, there, were, uh, there, were, uh, there were socializing post the social hour as well. And I'll let you just kind of fill in your imagination uh, over that, uh, what happened over there. But um, some of them were late nights, uh, but all, all very well worth it. Um, when I think back to some of the things that uh, really stick to my mind, uh, initially we were put into, I think groups of about six people where we were uh, kind of, we were, we were put together in a means where we had a little bit of a specialty in all sorts of fields, whether it was marketing, finance, um, HR, operations, and those six people stuck together for the entire two-year program. And those created still lifelong friendships. In fact, we were just texting this week, um, even though we've been out of the program for um, over six months, we're still in touch. Um, and I think that bond was really was really um, fortified through the in-person programs in that last quarter on our capstone project, uh, where we were asked to, asked to present um, a real plan to a real company um, at the end of last year. Michaela, did I miss anything about uh, any of the highlights during the immersion program? No, Takashi, I think, I mean, you hit on all the keys. Our, our program team does such an exceptional job of really maximizing the time that students have together and the combination of, you know, the teaching experience, the social experience, the professional development, the team bonding, the ability for people to check out Seattle and, and engage with the local business community, I think, makes for a very busy but very fulfilling time each and every opportunity folks have for these immersions. Yeah. And in, in looking back at the program, uh, Takashi, I wonder if you can identify our pinpoint classes or skills that you think you acquired um, that not only helped you make this transition into an entirely new career, but that you think will serve you well over a lifetime. Mm. Um. Generally, I think uh, a big takeaway was just being able to talk in business speak, headcount, uh, expenses, revenue. Um, yeah, because this is a foreign world to you as someone who was uh, involved in politics. That's right. And in the classroom before that. So 
generally business speak was a big thing that I just gained from being around uh, my classmates in these courses for two years. We now you know what return on equity is. I do. <laughs> that and much more. Um, we had many, many case studies throughout the course of the two-year program where we would go in-depth with the real company and make recommendations. And that's, quite frankly, a lot of what I do now is I get to know a company, get to hear their problems, and make some suggestions on how we think they can uh, save some money or how we think they can be a little more efficient. Um, that process, I think, was one that was refined course after course after course. And the case studies kept the kept the material fresh and kind of engaging. Um, I mentioned this once, how to read a 10K or the quarterly reports. That's come in useful. Um, the one course that comes to mind nowadays is macroeconomics. You think about uh, interest rates, monetary policy, what the Fed is going to do, what the impact is on going to be on our economy. Um, I can tell you, I would have been uh, swimming in the deep end had <laughs> I not taken that course, um, but I have a, a little firmer grasp on what those things mean and how they might affect uh, some of my clients, uh, IBM's clients. Yes. Now, Michaela, I wonder if you might think about what three things would you advise someone entering the program to do if they wanted to make a career pivot, the kind that Takashi has done? Are there things that they should do immediately? What they, should they be thinking about? Who should they be contacting? What are the three steps that you think are essential to a career pivot in an online MBA program? Yeah, John, that's a really great question. I would say one is engage early and engage often with our career team. We are here as partners in this exploration process. The second is really leverage the amazing community of hybrid students and alumni and the greater foster community to support this search. Takashi is an example where he did just that. Then I think third, um, but certainly not least, is just remain open, remain curious, um, just as to what could potentially come your way. I think maybe, you know, starting the program with one goal in mind, it may very well change and, and staying curious to see what unfolds is really key to the process too. Yep, only all really great advice. Well, listen, thank you so much. Uh, one last thing. Uh, uh, sort of, Michal, would you uh, tell people to find out more about the program and possibly apply? Of course, the website is a great repository of all that you really need to know. But above and beyond that, who can they contact uh, on your team or yourself uh, to learn a little bit more? Yeah, thanks. Um, we have an amazing admissions team led by Hoi Nguyen and Mara Do. And so the easiest way to get a hold of them is just through our UW hybrid email address. It's uwhybrid at uw.edu. They'll be here to help support, answer questions, and help you really determine if this is the best fit program for you. That's great. Takashi, uh, future success. I wish it for you. Uh, it's been great to spend this little time with you. Uh, clearly, you're on a, a, a new journey, and I hope you're enjoying it. And I hope it brings you everything you want it to bring. And Michaela, thank you for participating here. Really appreciated it. I think everyone learned a lot about the program um, and how to make a career pivot, too. All right. This is John Burn with Poets and Quads. Thanks for watching.